Uh, too, long, too long introduction. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to be telling you about the work we have been doing to, to show the, the role of telomeres in, in aging. So I think it's pretty obvious for this audience that the only way really to be able to prevent or to cure a disease is to understand the origin. And we have learned this from, from the infectious diseases. So now we have other diseases that worry us, and uh, the only way really to prevent or to cure them will be to understand the cause. And I think there is quite a lot of consensus that these diseases have a common cause, and this common cause is uh, aging. And you can see this, for instance, in the case of cancer. You can see here the incidence of, of cancer in the, in the UK. And uh, cancer is a rare disease when we are young, but as we age, cancer becomes prevalent. So there, there is something associated with aging that is increasing the risk of, of cancer. Uh, the same for, uh, for instance, heart failure. Again, in the British population, you can see that uh, heart infarct is very rare when we are young, but it's when we age when this becomes prevalent in men and women. So we, can, you, we could say that we are protected against these diseases up to when we are 40 or so, and then these diseases become prevalent because we are aging. And this is a, a big problem because, as you know, the, there is a phenomenon of demographic aging, and uh, the, the projections of all these diseases are, are increasing. This is just for Alzheimer, but the same you can find for heart disease, for cancer, etc. So it's really very important to understand why we age. And this is what we are doing in my laboratory. This is a view that I think we share with many other scientists working in this field. We think that uh, when we are young, it's, uh, it's difficult that these diseases happen. And it's when we uh, suffer this molecular aging, when this could be considered the cause of different diseases associated with aging. This cause can be, of course, uh, genetic, or it can be related to the environment. And only if we know these causes, we could have good biomarkers to be able to prevent or uh, predict the risk of different diseases. But also, we know these causes, we would be, in theory, be able to delay aging. And we would be able, really, to extend the time of um, use of an organism and delay not one, but many different diseases at once. Because all these diseases have a common origin, which is aging. And this is sort of a change in paradigm, and this was reflected in this review by Linda Partridge, where I think up to now we have seen that uh, these diseases, uh, they were not thought to have uh, many things in common, and they have been studied uh, independently, but what we are saying right now is that they have a common origin, which is this molecular aging process, and if we really understand this process, we could have ways to prevent and treat eff effectively uh, many of these diseases. So um, a few years ago, I was uh, uh, lucky to participate in a, in a review that we call the Hallmarks of Aging that was initially started by Manuel Serrano, Linda Partridge, and myself. And then we were joined by Lopez Otin and Kremer. And we defined some of the, of the uh, Hallmarks of Aging. And of course, uh, I, I devoted my life to one of them, which is the, the, the shortening of telomeres. And uh, in this review, we proposed a shortening of telomeres um, together with uh, genomic instability were primary causes of aging because they can lead to other causes uh, of aging. And we heard about that already. Telomere shortening, for instance, will lead to genomic instability, stem cell exhaustion, cellular senescence, mitochondrial dysfunction, epigenetic alterations, and probably uh, even to others that have not been connected so far. So probably I don't need to, to tell this audience what are telomeres. Telomeres are the ends of chromosomes, and they are essential for uh, protecting uh, the chromosome. So in the absence of telomeres, uh, chromosomes become unstable, and this, this impedes cell proliferation. So an analogy has been made between the telomeres and the end of the shoelace, uh, this protective function. Of course, um, um, Telomeres uh, uh, shorten uh, associated to cell division. And uh, as we age, uh, our cells have to divide uh, in order to regenerate tissues. There must, there must be an enzyme, I mean, there must be an activity, and this activity is telomerase, that um, uh, should be able to um, uh, re-elongate telomeres in order to have, uh, you know, different generations in, in, within a species. And actually, telomerase, is activated at the pluripotent state in, uh, in, in, uh, when we are embryos, and this telomerase activity will re-elongate telomeres, and individuals basically have to live 
uh, with these telomeres. Uh, as uh, we are born, uh, telomerase is, I'm simplifying, but telomerase is more or less shut down in many tissues, and uh, telomeres start shortening, and this also happens in the stem cells. When telomeres reach a critically short length, we think that this triggers disease. Cancer is also an age-associated disease, as I said before, but the difference between cancer and other age-associated diseases is that cancer cells are immortal. They are able to divide indefinitely, and this is because they reactivate telomerase. So this is already telling you the importance of telomerase as a, a way to achieve this uh, cellular immortality. Actually, you can immortalize a normal cell just by adding telomerase. This was shown in 1998 uh, for the first time. We know now that there are humans that are mutant for telomerase. They are born with much shorter telomeres, and they develop the so-called telomere syndromes. Uh, these are some of the diseases associated to extreme telomere shortening owing to mutations in telomerase. And this is telling us that the telomere length really is really limiting for longevity in humans. Uh, also, we know now that uh, not every uh, one of us has the same telomere length for a given age, and uh, there is a lot of uh, variability. And there are many studies that propose that telomere length could be a biomarker of this aging process and could be used to uh, predict the risk uh, for different diseases. I must say that I founded a company called LifeLength that is devoted to using telomere length as a biomarker for, for aging, for molecular aging. So um, when uh, before even the, the, the human telomere syndromes were discovered, and uh, this was mentioned before, uh, uh, with Carol Greider, we generated, uh, we isolated the mouse telomerase gene and we generated the first mice uh, without the telomerase enzyme. And this was uh, important to demonstrate that telomerase was the enzyme maintaining telomeres in mammals and if telomeres were short, this led to end-to-end -end fusions. This was sufficient to lead to a loss of the regenerative capacity of tissues and development of many different age-associated uh, diseases. Also, these mice, because they don't have telomerase, they were resistant to cancer, so which, which showed the importance of telomere maintenance for cancer cells. Um, so this is telling you that even in a, in a mouse, uh, if you remove telomerase, these mice have had a, a phenotype, and this phenotype was already seen in the first generation. This has been a puzzle up to recently, because uh, you may know that mice are born with very long telomeres, uh, depends on the strain, but more or less about 50 kb, some strains. We are born with much shorter telomeres, around 15 kb, more or less, and the mice only live two years and we live up to 80 or more years. So some people thought, okay, mice are not aging due to telomere shortening because they, they have very long telomeres and they live much less. However, in my group, uh, we showed a few years ago that uh, uh, the rate of telomere shortening in mice is about a, a thousand times faster than in humans. So in, in humans, it's around 70, it depends on the study, but around 70 to 100 base pairs per year. And in the mice, we showed that this was a thousand times faster. So which gave us the clue that maybe um, telomere um, shortening rates could be determining longevity in different species, not only in humans or mice. And we recently published a study that actually was, was out this past Monday, in which we collaborated uh, with the Zoo um, of Madrid and also with a group working in the University of Barcelona with wild uh, uh, seagulls, in order to be able to determine this rate of telomere shortening and to see whether this had anything to do with the longevity of, of different species of mammals and birds. And I show you here the results. So we are taking different individuals of different ages of each species determining telomere length using in parallel and using the same technique, which is a Q-fish technique, and we are determining the rate of telomere shortening for mice. Uh, in mice, we, we, we could reproduce, but what I showed you before, a very fast rate of telomere shortening, but we also measure dolphin, goats, reindeer, um, uh, flamingos, uh, vulture, uh, etc. And um, interestingly, when we plotted the initial telomere length versus the uh, maximum or average lifespan, we didn't find any correlation. I mean, this was already known. There were previous papers showing that there was no correlation between initial telomere length and lifespan, uh, either uh, applying a linear regression or a power law, power law regression. However, when we plotted the rate of telomere shortening, which is here, 
you can see here that this rate of telomere shortening fitted very well uh, uh, to a, a, a power, power law uh, curve, both the maximum lifespan and the average lifespan. You can see a very high R square number. And actually, using these power laws, we, could be, we were able to predict very precisely the longevity of different spe species only knowing the rate of shortening. So we think that the rate of telomere shortening may be a universal pattern that uh, um, explains different species longevity. Uh, this is the summary of the work with the species that we studied and the different uh, telomere shortening rates. Of course, this can be expanded to other species to see how universal this is. But it's interesting to see that, for instance, uh, flamingos and elephants, which of course are quite distant species, these are birds, these are mammals, however, they share a similar rate of telomere shortening and they also share a similar longevity. So this may be uh, sort of an epigenetic, if you want, um, determinant of a species lifespan, uh, which could be similar in a species that are quite different, uh, because this is a mammal and this is a bird. So, um, of course, uh, what could you do if you have short telomeres? And this has been also uh, something that we have been doing in my lab. So we, we first described that in mice, um, if you generate transgenic mice um, that have uh, increased telomerase in the adult organism, we show in 2008 that it was possible to increase uh, um, uh, lifespan by, by up to 40%. So the mice that had uh, longer telomeres, because we were, we were transgenically expressing telomerase, could live up to 40% longer. So um, the majority of mice were reaching the maximum lifespan. Okay? You can see here survival last three years. These are the control mice. All of them are dead. Most of them are dead. And these mice, which have longer telomeres, 40% uh, were still alive. So this, we are increasing uh, both the median longevity and the health span, because the first mice that die die much later than the control mice. This is just an image of these mice. They have the same age, two years, but the ones with longer telomeres uh, clearly are, are younger, not only in appearance, but everything. So we, we then uh, try to, to apply this to a, to a possible therapeutic strategy. And for that, we uh, decided to, to use a gene therapy. Gene therapy using adeno-associated viruses to deliver telomerase um, whenever it was needed. And we did the first experiment with, with mice, of course, with wild-type mice. We thought that if aging is produced owing to telomerase deficiency in adult life, then if you would deliver telomerase in adult life in mice, you should be able to delay aging and, and, and age-related diseases if telomere shortening is really one of these molecular causes of aging. We decided to use adeno-associated viruses because these are widely used right now for, for delivery of genes into humans for different um, syndromes. And um, we thought this could be a, a good way to deliver telomerase because these vectors are non-integrative and they will express telomerase uh, only temporarily because if cells divide in order to regenerate tissues, they will dilute out telomerase. And we thought this could be a way of preventing uh, uh, persistent expression of telomerase, which could be increase the risk of cancer, for instance. So with this in mind, we just did the experiment. We took mice that were middle age, one year of age, or old, two years of age, gave them a single intravenous treatment with these telomerase gene therapy vectors. Then we waited. We see that the mice treated with telomerase had longer telomeres, less DNA damage. And then we saw that we could delay not one, but many different diseases associated with aging. We, these mice had improved glucose tolerance, uh, improved uh, skin fitness, less cognitive decline, less osteoporosis, improved neuromuscular coordination, and cancer was also delayed. Cancer is an age-related disease, so if, um, if you are able to maintain uh, a mouse younger uh, because it has, uh, you know, less uh, short telomeres, you can also delay cancer. And these mice also uh, live longer. So the one-year-old group had an increase in uh, median lifespan of 24%, and the two-year-old group of 30%. So the, 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 youngest, the, the younger you treated, the better was for the increase in survival. This is the survival curve of the one-year-old group. The mice were treated at one year of age. You can see here the, the control group treated with the, um, the, 
let's say, a, a, a control vector, uh, the placebo. This is the survival. And when you treat with the telomerase, wild type, you can see the increase in median and maximum longevity. And if you treat with a telomerase that is catalytically inactive, that is not able to elongate telomeres, it's a dominant negative for telomerase, then you don't see any effect on longevity. So this was telling us that is the, the role of telomerase in elongating telomeres, rescuing short telomeres, what is able to extend lifespan in, in mice. We then uh, decided to try to extend lifespan in mice by maintaining long telomeres in a way that was independent of, independent of telomeres. And we did this experiment more recently, in 2016. We, we, we knew, uh, because this was published by us and others, that uh, telomerase is activated in the inner cell mass, and this is where telomerase elongates telomeres. And uh, this is because the chromatin in these cells is an open chromatin and allows for, for telomerase elongation. Uh, we also knew that uh, when you reprogram normal cells into pluripotent cells, telomerase is activated and telomeres are elongated. So you can have um, generation of these induced pluripotent stem cells. And, and when you do that, the telomeres are elongated. But then we noticed that if we kept these cells in culture, the telomeres kept growing. So we could generate ES cells or IPS cells which had much longer telomeres than those that are natural for the species. And we call these telomeres ultra-long telomeres. Now you could take these ES cells with ultra-long telomeres and try to generate a mouse that has ultra-long telomeres in the absence of any genetic manipulation. This is all ep epigenetics, right? You can use these cells, put them into a mouse, and this is what we did. We took a nasal morula and we aggregated ES cells that had either normal or ultra-long telomeres that are going to be green. And then we saw that these cells can contribute to uh, the blastocyst and they can contribute to a mouse. You can see here, for instance, a section of the eye of a mouse the telomeres are in red, and just by eye, you can see that the areas that are not green, which are the, the uh, let's say, the normal uh, uh, telomere length of a mouse, have much shorter telomeres than the areas that are in green, which are these, these ultra-long telomeres, are derived from these ultra-long telomere ES cells. So we were generating mice that, were, that had these cells with much longer telomeres in order to be able to see whether this was good or bad for a mouse, and we saw that um, mice with the ultra-long telomeres, they had an, incre an, in an increased uh, survival, and these were mice that were from 30 to 70% chimer chimeric mice. They also had less spontaneous tumors, and even induced tumors with uh, chemicals like DMBA, TPA in the skin, they were also resistant to tumor formation. So um, now we have a paper that is, is, has been accepted today where we, are, uh, we do the studies with 100% chimera. So mice that are 100% derived from cells with ultra-long telomeres. And we also see that these mice live longer and they have very interesting uh, phenotypes, uh, protection from, from aging phenotypes. So uh, I hope up to here I have convinced you that one of these molecular causes of aging is um, accumulation of short telomeres. And, um, and um, if, you are, if you are able to, to, to correct this, uh, for instance, by, by uh, activating telomerase or by using this epigenetic trick that I told you before uh, with uh, embryos, in the case of mice, you are able to maintain telomeres and you are able to, to delay aging. We in my lab are now focused really in trying to use this uh, telomerase activation strategy for the, to see whether it uh, can be used for the prevention or treatment of age-related diseases. And um, this is our goal, to see whether using telomerase gene therapy in mouse models of disease, uh, this could have any therapeutic benefit. And we have shown, I, I'm not going to tell you all the papers, but we have shown that uh, uh, telomerase gene therapy can improve the survival in mice, in mouse models of cardiovascular, of heart infarct. We published this in Nature Communication in 2014. We also have generated mouse models uh, for, of aplastic anemia uh, associated to short telomeres, and we have shown that treatment with the telomerase gene therapy in these mouse models can uh, increase the survival of these mice uh, with short telomeres, so it has also a therapeutic effect. And more recently, 
we have focus in pulmonary fibrosis, and I'm going to tell you about this a little bit with more detail. We did all these studies uh, in the context of an open innovation program with Roche. So let me, uh, let me tell you about pulmonary fibrosis. So pulmonary fibrosis is one of the most frequent uh, telomere-related uh, uh, diseases. Uh, actually, there were uh, important papers from the group of Mary Armanios and, and Christine Garcia as well, even though he's not here, showing that um, in the familial cases, there is a percentage of uh, familial cases of pulmonary fibrosis, they had the carrying mutations in telomerase. So um, this was telling you that short telomeres was at the origin of these diseases. They were at the origin of these diseases. But later on, um, the group of Mary Armanios also showed that even in the sporadic cases of pulmonary fibrosis, the patients had shorter telomeres. So which led to, um, to the idea, the notion that, that um, um, if you have uh, a healthy telomeres in the lung, uh, this is uh, somehow protecting you, they could be protecting you, or, or you, from pulmonary fibrosis, uh, uh, at least some types of pulmonary fibrosis, but if telomeres shorten in the lung, this could be at the origin of pulmonary fibrosis. So this is another way of seeing this, so we think that short telomeres are the origin of this disease. They can synergize with different uh, agents like pollution, radiation, smoking, uh, in uh, damaging the, the, the alveolar lung cells. Uh, I don't have time to tell you, but we know that induction of telomere dysfunction in alveolar type 2 cells is sufficient to induce pulmonary fibrosis. We published this uh, before. So we think that when these cells have short telomeres, this is going to induce an essence, DNA damage, etc. It's going to impair the ability of these cells to regenerate, and it's going to lead to uh, an immune response, fibroblast recruitment, and to fibrosis. So we are placing short telomeres upstream. So the current treatments for pulmonary fibrosis are drugs that are uh, aimed to, to decrease fibrosis, but they are not curing patients. And we think they are not curing patients because you still have short telomeres, and you still have the imperability of uh, the, the alveolar cells to regenerate. So we think we have to act upstream in order to be able someday to cure fibrosis. So the way we have to tackle this was to, to generate a mouse model of pulmonary fibrosis that was similar to the human disease. So we used the telomerase deficient mice, and we challenged them with a low dose of bleomycin, which doesn't do anything in a wild type mouse. So you treat wild type mice with this low bleomycin dose, and they are fine. But if you treat a telomerase deficient mice with bleomycin, low dose, these mice develop pulmonary fibrosis. So we thought this could be similar to the human uh, situation. And we have treated these mice with, um, with the telomerase gene therapy. And we have seen uh, that uh, this is able to really uh, decrease inflammation and decrease uh, fibrosis. So it's, it's actually preventing um, the, the, pr the progression of fibrosis in this mouse model. And let me show you the results with a little bit more detail. So first, this is just to show you that if you treat a mouse lung with AAV9 um, um, GFP, so this is just to see where this AAV9 is delivering the genes in the lung, we were very lucky because AAV9 is delivering, in this case, uh, GFP, specifically to the alveolar type 2 cells, which are those that express the sulfactan protein C. And actually, 80% of the GFP-positive cells, uh, when you treat with these vectors, are alveolar type 2, ce two cells. And uh, in our experiments, we, we achieve more or less a 14% of alveolar type 2 cells that are targeted with the GFP. Uh, now, instead of GFP, you can put telomerase, right, and see, see what happens. And this is, the, this is the experiment we did. So we, we use this mouse model uh, that we can challenge with a low bleomycin dose. Then we wait for two weeks for the mice to develop pulmonary fibrosis. We diagnose the sick mice by CT, and we only use the mice that are, have an abnormal CT image to treat, either with the telomerase or with an empty vector. And then we wait for seven weeks, and we are going to determine whether these mice have progressed or they have not progressed uh, in this disease. And the results were pretty uh, clear. So the, all the uh, mice treated with the empty vector 100% progressed to severe fibrosis. You can see here the lung full of this fibrosis. And the mice that we treated with telomerase, half of them were completely cured. There was no fibrosis, no progression. And the other half only had what we call mild fibrosis, which are small patches that you can see here compared to the control group. 
So really, telomerase gene therapy was either completely eliminating or preventing the progression of fibrosis. And we could see also that when we look at panels of pro-inflammatory cytokines, already three weeks after the treatment, we could see a very clear effect that was maintained in weeks post-treatment in uh, uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines, as well as in uh, fibrotic pathways. We could see telomerase treatment was decreasing this. We went then to molecular markers, uh, like uh, DNA damage markers, gamma H2AX, uh, senescence markers, like uh, P53, P21, beta gal You can see that all these were decreased already three weeks after treatment. We can show this specifically in the alveolar type 2 cells. For instance, these are alveolar type 2 cells that show DNA damage. You can see how these are decreased when we treat the mice with the telomerase gene therapy. So this is telling us that short telomeres must be upstream because if you um, treat with the telomerase gene therapy and correct these short telomeres, then you have a beneficial effect in many different things, which must be therefore downstream like uh, DNA damage, senescence apoptosis, uh, we show an increased proliferation of alveolar type 2 cells, decreased inflammation, decreased uh, uh, activation of myofibroblast, uh, decreased collagen deposits, and improved pulmonary function. So we think that this is placing short telomeres upstream and uh, is showing that there might be a benefit of uh, telomeres activation in this disease. We were, of course, worried of whether if we activate telomerase in a, in a lung, uh, we could, uh, on the long term, favor cancer. And for that, we did, last, last year also, we published another experiment, which I think is an important experiment, in which um, we combined telomerase activation with uh, activation of an oncogene, a KRAS oncogene. You know that KRAS activation in, lung, in mouse models leads to lung cancer. This is well established. So we use a mouse model that is going to develop lung cancer in the lung, and either before, before the activation of KRAS or at the same time of the activation of KRAS, we put uh, telomerase or we put uh, uh, dominant negative telomerase or, or, a, or, or a null vector to see whether in this accelerated lung cancer model, telomerase could be increasing cancer, right? This is to, to check for the safety of the telomerase in therapy. This was already published and just show you, showing you the, the result. So we observed, you can see here, the mice with tumors, both in the pretreatment or the simultaneous treatment uh, condition. And you can see here that telomerase treatment is not increasing uh, the, 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 the numbers of tumors or the severity of these tumors. This is just a figure of the paper. You can check the whole paper here. And uh, both in the pretreatment and in the post-treatment, uh, simultaneous treatment experiment. So, at least in this mouse model, telomerase is not changing anything in the uh, progression of tumors induced by KRAS. Interestingly, in the simultaneous, in the, in the pretreatment, inhibition of telomerase with a dominant negative had a, a tumor inhibition effect, and this could be predicted. I mean, uh, if you are uh, decreasing telomere length and inhibiting telomerase before KRAS activation, we saw that this was anti-cancer. But uh, putting telomerase uh, was not changing anything because in the tumors probably telomerase uh, is already activated in, in mouse tumors, the same as, uh, has, has, has been shown for, for human tumors, sorry. So um, with all this, we think that there is benefit probably in trying to explore uh, in, human, in, in human clinical trials, whether telomerase activation using, for instance, gene therapy could have, um, could have a beneficial effect in, 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 in um, really uh, uh, stopping the progression or, 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 or um, curing this disease in, in patients. And we are exploring this. We have uh, funding from, uh, uh, from a Spanish uh, agency, and we are developing the human vectors uh, for, for trying this in, in, in the human disease. So I'm finishing already. I hope I have convinced you that telomeres are important for aging. Um, and um, just want to finish with a, with a Greek myth uh, that you may know is the myth of the, uh, of the parque. So these were three, is the way the Greeks had to explain longevity, right? They, they thought there were three sisters. This is the, the, Roman, the Roman version of the names. <laughs> But these three sisters, uh, they, were, they were making this, this threat, which is the threat of life. 
So this was, was this one was generating the threat. This was this one was measuring the threat. And when whenever the cell system cut the threat, this was the end of life. You, you can imagine this threat are the telomeres, right? <laughs> And whenever the telomeres are short, this is the end of life. And there is a very nice version of this myth at the Prado Museum in Madrid. So if you go to Madrid, go to the Prado and see this painting by Goya. So Goya was one of the first uh, surreal painters. And this is, this is a painting that he had at his house uh, near Madrid. And this is represented here at the Parque Amis. You cannot see the threat. There is no threat. But Goya painted the, the, the sister that was making the thread with a newborn, probably the time of life with the longest telomeres, right? <laughs> and then the, the sister measuring the thread is represented with lens. With lens. This is the, the microscope, right, <laughs> that we use to, to measure telomeres. And finally, the, this is more obvious, the scissors to, to cut the thread. So in my lab, of course, we are understanding, we are trying to understand why we age, not to be immortal, but to be able to, to develop new therapies to cure diseases that, that so far are incurable. And finally, this is the, the people in my group. Um, and we have collaborated with Fatima Bosch for the generation of um, the gene therapy vectors. Thank you very much. <laughs>